Hey everyone, this is Bob McIntosh from Mass Hire Low Career Center. Today with me, I have Lata Struwing, and she's going to be talking about the applicant tracking system. Don't fear the applicant tracking system, learn to beat it. So before I go any further, what I'd like you to do is look over to your right where you can raise your hand, you can ask questions, and you can download the PDF of the presentation. And I'm gonna tell you right now that what we're gonna show you isn't the full presentation. It's just sort of the guiding points that uh, I'm gonna have a lot to follow. Uh, she's got a lot of rich information on the presentation. Would you do me a favor and would you download it now? Because if there are any mechanical difficulties, then at least you'll have that presentation. So, could you raise your hand to tell me that you hear me and see me? And Lata, too. Okay, I don't see any hands being raised. Could you, in the question box, could you say, yeah, Bob, I hear you and see me? Oh, good. Stop being annoying. Good. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. Woo! All right. So I do want to say that Lata and I, you know, found each other on LinkedIn and I reached out to her and I said, hey, you know, would you want to talk about, you know, the applicant tracking system? And she said, sure. And so that's where we ended up here. I do also want to say that she's written two books and she's on, she, she's just published her third book. And I'm going to have her introduce herself and talk a little bit about the book. So do you want to take it away, Lata? Sure. Thank you, Bob. And thanks for having me here. I'm pretty excited about this. And I have, just so the audience understands, I have a background in human resources, career strategy, and I have my own business as well. Um, the All three books are career-related books. And the latest one is called Unpacking Outplacement. And it is a book that is designed for career professionals to add another revenue stream to their their current existing business. And um, just one little tip I can give to any of the listeners uh, here on the call today is that if you are in a situation where you are being terminated, I highly recommend that you go back to your employer and you ask if there is any money in the budget for uh, career uh, services as you you leave because many times employers will give you some money for that and that way you can you know work with a great person like bob you can also get some private support as well so that's one tip i can give to the listeners today all right thank you very much and before i go any further i do have a poll question and lata doesn't know this but i am going to ask <laughs> you um a very simple question and that is are you aware of the applicant tracking system? And oh, by the way, I just noticed someone in the comments saying that, hey, I'm here, I'm really excited. And that's Sveta, she's someone I know on LinkedIn. So there are gonna be some people on LinkedIn as well as some mass hire you know, members. It's all good, it's all good. Mm -hmm. So are you aware of the applicant tracking system? I'm launching it now. Hello. Whoops, I got to select it first. There we go. And I've distributed the poll. Wow, you guys are really active this afternoon. That's awesome. 75% of you voted. Okay, 81%. Okay, so 87% of you voted. For any of you who've been on a webinar with me, you know that I like about 95% or I just feel totally disheartened. So please, please, <laughs> let's get to 95%. Okay, 10 more seconds. We're almost there, 91%. Okay, thank you very much. So let me share with you, whoops. This sometimes happens too. Let me share with you the results. What we have is 78% of you are, uh, yes, you're mm -hmm. totally aware. And 17% of you say sort of, and 5% of you say, what is it? So for those 26% uh, of you who aren't quite, or rather bad math, bad math. So for the, <laughs> 
All right, so for those 20, what is it, 22% of you who aren't aware of it, then, all right, that's what we're gonna talk about. And I, hope, uh, I was just gonna say for a challenge for me, I hope that's 78%, I hope I can, I can uh, share some new information. Ah, uh, yeah, absolutely, excellent, excellent. And I already have a statement or a question. Okay, so this is a good one, but let's let's first start and I'll get back to it. Okay, so what uh, we're gonna be talking about today is um, why do we have the ATS? I'm just gonna run through these, Lata. What mm -hmm. companies have the ATS? How is it set up? What challenges, you know, what are the challenges with the ATS? And seven strategic ATS tips to get through. This is gonna be great. Excellent, mm -hmm. okay. All right. I guess we do have the full presentation here, Lotta. I'm sorry, but okay, go ahead. You, you tell me, do you want me to start now? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, okay. So I think everybody saw that the first few are about the back end of the ATS and why it's here and, and what is the need for it and who has it. And the reason I wanted to start with this information is because I there's so much confusion around the ATS and so many people think there's a black hole and so many people hate HR and recruiters. And so I think if we're able to just um, communicate how what this is, how it works, you know, everybody that's involved, We'll maybe have a little bit more patience for everybody and know that there's a secondary way to get your your resume through. So that's why I wanted to start there. So the first one is why do we have ATS? And so and, and I've been in HR for over 25 years. So I remember the days when we had we read every single resume from front to back. We filed it and then we pulled it out three months later to see if we before we even advertise jobs. So I remember that far back and I, I've seen the progression all the way through. So the reason we have ATS um, the, are a couple of reasons. One, because the volume of resumes that are coming in for every single job is exponentially crazy and the growth has been crazy. So for every single job on average, there's about 300 applicants. Wow. And so when you think about that type of volume and one or two people looking at those resumes, it's really hard um, to do that. Um, the second thing is the quality of resumes. And so um, when pe because uh, ATS is a, 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 a tracking system and people are not people, but the machines are reading it, that if the resume isn't set up in a way that a machine can read it, it's not going to get through. The other thing that's really come up recently over the last, I'm gonna say five to seven years, there are bots that automatically distribute resumes massively to every job opening. And so I would just say to everybody who is here today, if you ever get anybody that calls you and says, hey, for a fee, I can land you a job or get you a job, run the other way from those people because that's exactly what they're doing. They're taking your resume and they're somehow connecting it to every single job opening, whether you're qualified or not, and hoping that it lands somewhere. So you can imagine, I've seen resumes come through for technical roles and they're retail store associates. So you, you know that that's a complete mismatch. Right. So the quality of resumes is there. Um, HR has always been considered a cost center versus a profit center, like sales is a profit center. And so HR departments are running very lean and business departments are running lean. And so um, they don't have the number of people that they used to be able to have to get through all of the resumes. Hence, they're relying on technology. The recruitment process is extremely complex. Um, I know recruiters who have anywhere from 50 to 75 open jobs that they're recruiting for. So when you think of that type of volume and every uh, recruitment aspect, every job can be in a different stage, that just makes the whole process very complicated. So, um, so let, me, let me say that um, for those of you who think that recruiters and HR are lazy, <laughs> they're not, they're not. And um, you know, if you are on Facebook and you're looking at groups uh, for recruiters, then they really uh, tell it how it is. And it's almost like they have this, uh, there's a special club, you know, and uh, they're, they're not lazy and, they're, and they have their frustrations. And I know that as job seekers, you have your frustrations, but you know, you may want to cut them some slack because yeah, it is a complex uh, process. 
I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's okay. And I do know recruiters, to your point, Bob, I do know recruiters that if, if they have a candidate who isn't following the process, they won't even look at their stuff because they don't have the time. Mm -hmm. And they're thinking if they can't follow the input, what we've asked them to do, that means they're not gonna be good on the job. Right. So, so we will talk about that. The, the last thing there is why we have them is just the speed of the process. So now when com because companies are operating in a very lean capacity, um, and if somebody gives two weeks notice and they're gone, it is a very uh, rushed process to sometimes to get through and it, to get somebody in place within two weeks is virtually impossible unless you've got somebody ready and lined up. And so that pr puts um, a burden on the rest of the organization. And, so and get, are, get it back to the volume of resumes. I uh, <laughs> saw somewhere, and someone even quoted fifty thousand a week. But I saw somewhere that thirty-eight thousand resumes, a, you know, a week alone for um, Google. Okay, Absolutely. that's it's crazy. crazy. You know, that's crazy. crazy. That's a crazy yeah. amount of resumes. All it right. Is. So, what you know, what companies so, have <laughs> applicant tracking systems? Yeah, so quickly, I'm going to say that every employer can get into this space right now. So majority of the large employers have them, um, the 98%, and this changes all the time. Majority of midsize, so I'm going to say 50% to higher than that, they all have them. And now small companies, they can enter into this space. They can buy smaller um, packages that allow them to to purchase ATS. So that's the other reason it's really important to for people to get their resumes in line with an ATS because any company can in, can get into this space right now. All right. Uh, well, how would how would a small company though? How would it outsource the ATS? How how would that work? So they have there's a couple of options. They either can hire um, if they have an external HR department, and that HR department can get into it, or there are small ATS systems. One's called Breezy, and it's a really good ATS, mm -hmm. and it is meant for smaller employers. So they can they can use it as well. Okay, so I want to I want to jump to this question that I bypassed earlier, um, sure. because it's a good one. Uh, I create my resume yeah. in InDesign. I'm a designer. It's my wheelhouse. And I export it to a PDF. The applicant uh, application sites allow for PDFs to be uploaded, and that is what I've been doing. I don't have multiple columns or graphics. Is using InDesign for my resume preventing ATS from scanning? That's a good question. Um, I again, if you're following the ATS format and and you are being asked to submit in a, P, a PDF format, um, it should go through. Um, however, um, I there is no guarantee that it will go through. There are some resume writers now who are uh, certified in graphic design resumes that will get through an ATS. So they obviously have some specialized knowledge. Um, so I would absolutely, you know, work with one of those d designers or make sure that you don't have the columns, the tabs, the, the, the graphics that are there. Words are the things that whether you're in a PDF or a Word document, the key words are the, the items that are priority. Okay, excellent. I hope that answers it. That's okay. So how is an ATS set up? Yeah, so, and this is where I, you know, when the people say, I hate HR and I hate, <laughs> I hate recruiters, right. I want them to understand what's going on in the back end. So um, the setup is as, as uh, important as, as anything. And so you can have different people setting it up and you can have different people looking at it at the one end. So uh, an ATS, when it goes into ATS, a job description will have the actual description, like what is uh, needed for the job. And then they'll also have the skills and the duties. This can be given to the HR department by a manager. It can be created in the compensation department through a job description. However, um, it gets to the uh, uh, ATS. The recruiter may work directly with the manager and say, what are the key words? And if they don't, it's just loaded into the ATS. So if they're very skilled, they're going to huddle and they're going to say, what are the words? What, are the, what is the industry jargon? How are we gonna get the right people in here? If they're not really skilled, they're just gonna take what's written and they're going to load it up. So um, that's why sometimes it can be really great and sometimes it's not gonna capture what they want. So it's really important that there's a synergy there between HR and the recruiter and the department. 
Um, and also when it's set up, there are different systems that will allow, for example, knockout questions. And knockout questions are questions like, do you have this specific de designation? If you don't, we can't hire you. It's just one of those things. Um, they'll also ask about years of experience, um, the different tools, maybe it's if it's technology, the type of languages that you have. And so depending on how you answer those questions, the ATS will give you either A, B or C pile or one to five stars. And so okay. that's what will be seen at the recruiter end. Okay, so just to be clear, um, so is everything that is uh, loaded into the applicant tracking system, is that in the job description or, or, or you know, that's job a, candidates? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's a great question, Bob. If there is synergy between the department manager, HR, and the recruiter, mm -hmm. then absolutely it should be. And I would say it absolutely should be. Everything that you need should be in the job description or the skills. So it should be in the posting somewhere. Um, if it's not, personally, I would say that's a gap. Yeah, no guarantee then, but... Uh... Well, you know, in some cases we know that the synergy between HR recruiters and the hiring manager isn't there, isn't very strong. Um, yeah, yeah, and that's why that's exactly why I say that, Bob. Because in a perfect world, mm -hmm. everybody should understand what the outcome is. Everybody should understand that getting the right information out the first time is critical to attract the right candidates. Right. So I believe you worked for Hallmark, correct? I did, yes, in Canada. Yeah. Okay, so um, up in Canada, I forgot to mention that you're north of Toronto. Uh, <laughs> and so, in any case, did, would you say that the synergy between you and the um, hiring managers was pretty strong? I would say a hundred percent. I learned my HR uh, through Hallmark, and we always had best practices. And uh, I was in the comp end, so I would develop all the job descriptions. I would develop them with the uh, hiring managers and I would always make sure it was packed with all the right terminology and then okay. the recruitment department would always verify it. So Good. that's when I talk about the synergy, um, there absolutely should be a full synergy there. Excellent. Okay. So challenges with the ATS. Yeah, so the challenges are that um, it's it's reviewed by what's called an o OCR optical character reference, and this is just a machine, and it doesn't have a brain, and it's just it's a machine saying, look for these words, this is what I want, and so it's going to pull out those words. So uh, that lends itself to to some great things, but it lends itself to some challenges. Um, we just talked about the quality of the in, the inputter. So again, the manager, HR, and recruiter, if there is synergy there, you're going to have great information and the job ad is going to be very, very clear. Right. Um, and then um, the throughput from the, the, the uh, uh, recruiter. So for example, I've got lots of good friends in recruiting and one that I was just speaking to as I was preparing this. Um, mm -hmm. He works with one of the banks in Canada and they have 90,000 employees across the country. So he, um, he looks at ATS information all the time and he has his recruiters absolutely scour the ATS, just knowing that people may not have the best resumes. So he will also not only depend, not only will he look at the ones that come into that A pile, but he will also have them do extra searches for the keywords that have, may not have come through. So when you've got a great department um, pulling all that information, you've got some good synergy and you're always going to get the best talent. Now, now why your friend, now why would he do this? Why, why would he go to the B pile or even the C pile to look for extra resumes? Well, he wants to find the best candidates and that's what he is hired to do. And so he knows that at times that people are not always optimizing their resume. And so right. he knows that he could have hidden talent in B and C pile. Okay. Did he, did he give you any kind of idea of how many people don't optimize their resume well? So um, he didn't, but I know that, uh, you know, from other recruiters and stuff that I'm mm -hmm. going to say that over half are missed through an ATS. You wow. can be complete. That's why it's called the black hole. People just feel, you know, I can't even tell you how many clients I've worked with over the years that have said, I never hear. I am the best qualified candidate that I had everything that was in the box and, wow. you know, they'll come to me and say, I'm not hearing from people. Why? And if we look at their resume, it's because their resume isn't optimized properly. Okay. 
I just wanted to point out to you folks. Okay, good. We got something going here. How do ATS hey. handle skills that may be optional? An ATS, um, so an ATS will only scan for the skills that it's asking for. So, mm -hmm. oh, so, may, so if the question is optional, this, this is an option on the job ad, it really depends on if um, it has been identified as a, um, an additional value skill. So if that has been identified at the input end as a skill that they want to pull out, then it will be picked up by an ATS scanner. Okay. I hope, I hope that I have an, I, okay, so I have a statement here. I have always had a great relationship with my HR partners and valued all the partnering and help other, you know, over the years. So not everyone hates HR. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I don't hate HR and I don't Thank hate you. recruiters, That's, but you know, uh, you know what? I, I totally agree. I, I mean, hate I, me, though, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've been in HR for a lot of years and I absolutely I've worked with some HR departments that aren't optimized right. I'm going to say but for the most part um, I love I love what I do it's great it's a great place to be uh, so one other I, I'm sorry let me just get through this one I, I like this one can one game the ATS hidden multiple yeah. words etc oh. so and you I know what he means is can he can you know can you write the words at the bottom of the resume in white font Oh, that's an interesting question. I have heard that, um, yes, so I've heard that you can do that, do that, absolutely. But the, the thing that really, the thing that's really important to remember is that ATS isn't the end game. If you have all this, all this information in your resume and the recruiter gets it and they don't like what they see, you're not going to get through. Right, right. Um, and, and I can give you an example of an HR department not working in synergy with a, a business group. And that was um, um, my partner. He he works with a, a technology called Teradata and he was a, a manager um, at, a, at a big retailer. They were looking for Teradata, uh, Teradata people and the HR department gave him like 20 resumes and it had Teradata and all they scanned for was Teradata. Not that anybody had looked at it. So amongst those 10, res or 10 resumes, like 90% of them, they couldn't use. And he, he got, sent them back and said, no, this is the, we told you what we need. So you need to start scanning for this stuff too. So, so yeah, I mean, if, if it happens to get through, there is going to be somebody at the other end that will read it. All right. Okay, so um, you said no ATS is the same. Did, I'm sorry, what did you mean by that? So ATSs have been around for years and years. And so some are old and antiquated, some are brand new. Um, the technology has changed, um, but I would say that because they're not all the same, you don't know as an inputter what will be accepted and what will not. Um, and then the reason, you know, it would be nice to say, well, why doesn't everybody just get on board and get a good ATS? Um, yeah. The situation is they're expensive for departments and part of the things that i was saying earlier was that hr departments are cost centered so if you have an old ats and it's you were still getting the same number of hires that you would with a new ats and it just happens to be clunky for the people who are using it then that's not going to be a business case to get you a new and refreshed ats so again because they're expensive um, they're not always going to be refreshed and so you have some legacy ATS systems that are very difficult to work with and I've seen some of them and they're not pretty what comes out of them isn't pretty so a two-page resume may be eight pages and it's information that's all over the place so I have a question from a, va a very valued customer of mine and that is mm -hmm. in short does the ATS scan cover letters an ATS will scan anything you ask it to scan so if you are asked to submit a cover letter your mm -hmm. cover letter should also have the keywords that they're being asked for. So okay. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. But if not asked for, then is submitting that's, a cover letter. Say again? That's where, yeah. So it's an interesting question because I see posts on LinkedIn saying the cover letter is dead. I know recruiters who love cover letters because it's their introduction to the resume. Right, right. Um, and and again, so I would all I say is if you were asked to submit a cover letter, submit a cover letter. If you're asked to submit a resume, submit a resume. Okay. Okay. Follow the instructions. Follow instructions, right.
Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, and so this is just a quick reminder, just that the level of skill and knowledge um, required is just going to be based on the success and the outcome. I don't think there are, there's, uh, there's no bad news here. I mean, there are many great people who operate ATS. There are many, you know, they, they get great hires from it. It's absolutely, lots of people know how to use them properly. Um, and it's not, I don't want to scare anybody here. I just think the background information is really important for those tips as we move forward. And I think this background information, it just sparks people into getting the ATS in, in a format that is readable and, and moving forward. Forward. Okay, very good. So, seven strategic tips to get through the yes. ATS. Yeah, and so um, the keyword match, absolutely, we're going to talk about that. The design, uh, we had the question about InDesign. It's just supposed to be very uh, simple, uh, easy to read. Have a professional resume format, we'll review that. Have your fonts that are popular and simple and uh, use familiar language. Mm -hmm. Send it in the format requested. And the seventh tip uh, is just to follow up in person. And we'll talk about we'll talk we'll talk about each one of these aspects for sure. Okay, so we're getting to the meat of the presentation. Mm -hmm. but... Yeah. All right. And I hope this has just clarified the background for everybody so everybody just understands the nuts and bolts and how it works. Because I think I personally find that. Uh, helps people understand that. Um, mm -hmm. So I've done what I've done here is I just pulled some information for a, a job ad for a maintenance electrician. And there's two pieces here. This is the job description piece. And so a question I'm asked a lot from clients is, how do I know what the keywords are? And that's a great question. And so that's one of the things that we need to do when we read a job description. So if you just go to the next slide, I've just taken I've just taken a, a view on to what some of the keywords may be. Um, we're seeing uh, weld paint plastic stamping, so you know that what you so visibly you can see what type of environment if this this is. Conveyors overheads, so these are the type of equipment they're going to be working on. Um, improving processes, minimize disruption. You're going to work, be working on a production line. Mm -hmm. Preventative maintenance, electrical or mechanical. So you're seeing the possible words that can be used in an ATS system. So when you go and pick out the words, and I do have some guidance for people to pick out the words that they think are going to be uh, part of the requirements, um, there are different ways that you can do that. But the first step is just sitting down to seeing what do I think is important here? And if you look at the word troubleshoot, I've highlighted it, but you'll see it's, it's, it's in the next section as well. So these are the things that you would look, look for. So the next slide, it just shows again, that's the job description. And the next slide shows the skills. Mm -hmm. And so this is a lot of information. So again, you wow. can, there's lots of here. And so somebody asked a question about um, optional experience. So if the optional experience is here, um, then again, if it's if you think it has a keyword, then you're absolutely going to um, look for it. So the reason I wanted to have this information here is because you look at this, you think, wow, this could be really overwhelming. So again, it's a matter of thinking about the job and what potential words could be. So the next slide will just show the words that I picked out. Well, well, then before we go further with this, um, I, and I know this is on the minds of people is, um, is it important that you spell the words exactly as they appear in the job description? Yeah, and so that's a great question. So for example, um, if you're applying for a job and it's a, a retail manager, yeah. then, and if you're, if you're a store manager, change it somewhere to retail manager. Because the more closely you link the keyword, like the job title would be a keyword, mm -hmm. that oh, you... Yeah then you absolutely want to do that. So here again, some of the words that I picked, uh, licensed technician, you can see how, how often troubleshooting comes, comes through here, problem mm -hmm. solving, um, rotating shifts, they're working in multiple facilities, changing priorities. So these are things that you can, should add the words that you should absolutely have in your resume. So are and you if, saying that it's not only the correct words to have, but it's also a density of, of keywords? Yeah. So like you said, troubleshooting appears three, maybe four times, three times at yeah. least. Yep. Yeah. Huh. So you can you can have in your resume if you're the, the previous slide, it showed that they they can be troubleshooting electrical equipment. They can be troubleshooting mechanical equipment. 
So you would okay. be sep separating those in your resume um, just um, to identify that. Okay, so let me just pause here because someone has a question. Uh, and so if the ATS attempts to match required keywords and those keywords are highly dependent upon those identified by the company, how valuable are tools like, oh, <laughs> I think you're going to get into something like this, jobscan.co, which, you know, compares overall match of resumes to job postings. Yeah, so job want to go there. No, well, Jobscan, it's, it's a good tool. I mean, Jobscan oh, good. Has, I'm a big fan of Jobscan. Yeah, um, no. You know, I think, I'm not know, a salesperson any, for them, but, you know. No, no, anything you can do to help, I think, is, is going to be, help, be helpful because Jobscan I, provides two tools. One, it'll provide, you can, it has a tool where you can actually put in the job posting, the mm -hmm. information from the job posting and then you can put in your resume and it'll give you a quality match so anything you can do to uh help help your odds i i totally encourage it okay all right good good uh so let me see if i can get to one more i've heard it said that one should customize resumes for every single job application is that true how much time should i be spending yes. on that that is an excellent question and the answer is yes, but I mm -hmm. don't want you to think that it's overwhelming. Um, and this, this is a great example. For example, if you're a maintenance electrician, you want to be a maintenance electrician and you have been, you may have to move some of the wording in your resume. A maintenance electrician is a great example of a standardized job that's going to be very similar everywhere. You may have to move some of the wording, you may have to tweak some of the wording, but it's not a complete rewrite. Um, I have some clients who have three different skills and they have three different resumes, so that becomes more challenging. So, but yes, you absolutely have to customize your resume for every job ad, that, and it doesn't have to be difficult. Okay, all right. Forward. So keyword so, match, yeah. Yeah, and so this is one of the things that I think is really important because, uh, you know, people get overwhelmed by this and there's actually doing this once makes it very simple. And so if if you to to find out what the keywords are, number one, you can review the job description and the job ad. Um, you can look at, um, you know, if it's a project manager, you can pull project manager from six different job ads. You will absolutely find similarities in each of those job ads. So then you're getting into what could be industry keywords. Um, and then you would just customize it from industry keywords to company keywords, like what specifically in the job description. I, you know, LinkedIn is becoming a more robust tool every single day. And I think if you can find somebody who's doing the same job in the company that you want to work with, I think that's a great way. And that's you just go to the company profile and type in the job title and see who's there and connect with them and have a conversation. The other thing that's really popular these days is a word scramble. We see them all the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't put, put one up here, but if you just go to wordscramble.com and throw in all the words in the job description into the template and you hit, uh, you know, scramble, the words that are repeated most will be highlighted, they'll be bigger, they'll be bolder. Those are the words that you should be putting in your resume. So I can guarantee in, the, in that maintenance one, troubleshooting would be the biggest word there. So, yeah. so word scrambles are a great way just to you know, find out what those most popular words are. The other thing is knowledge of the industry. And I, I can't emphasize enough that it's all of these combined that will help you identify keywords. So, uh, you know, word scrambles would be uh, products like Wordle.com, yeah. uh, Tagzito. I mean, there are many, many. And yes. what they do is they create a word cloud where they, some Correct. of the words are bigger than others. So that, that's what Lot is talking about. And they can be very helpful in terms of identifying the key words. Now, I do have a, a statement or rather a question here. Mm -hmm. How to include these many key words without losing all personalization of your resume or seeming to simplify or simply spit back all the skills as written in the job description. And you know, when I talk about the professional or the uh, knockout resume, yeah. I do talk about writing a very you know, sound, um, well-written resume, but 
what what about you know trying to meet all those keywords and and, and avoiding yeah. the cliches and and such so that's you know what that's a wonderful question and so i had highlighted a whole bunch of um yellow uh, those are words that could be keywords so so for example uh, there was the one about troubleshooting and so part of if you have tr done troubleshooting for mechanical equipment and troubleshooting for um, like uh, uh, electrical equipment, then that is personalized to what you have actually done. And so that's, so yes, you're spitting out the words, but only I always encourage people to be very genuine in their resumes. If you don't have something, don't put it on your resume. Um, so anywhere that you can absolutely um, identify what you have in your resume that matches what the job ad is saying, absolutely use it. If you don't have it, then don't pretend. Okay. And and then someone came back to job scan and, and I think we've answered this, but if you want to elaborate more, uh, he writes, can Lata com comment on using an online keyword scanner to pull the specific keywords out like job scan? Um, so, so I would say that keywords are having been at the end where um, I am working with the recruiters to set up a job posting the, the 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 keywords are identified by the recruiter so unless you can actually talk to the recruiter and say what are the keywords hmm. we're not going to know where it's just you know it's a mystery to them and them only so um or sorry they know and it's a mystery to, to the rest of us so i would say that like i did with with this job i showed here the maintenance electrician i'm guessing at what the keywords are based on my knowledge of the industry i know a lot of you know maintenance electricians i've helped them over the years i've been in production environments so i understand that so i think it's a com it's just a combination of everything here that helps you identify them i think job scan would from a uh, a computer-based system would have that that information embedded in it as well so it would know okay onward to the second tip yeah so again just avoid fancy design because ats is they have different creators they're different ages they're different sizes um and the person who asked the question about indesign don't mm -hmm. add text boxes don't have images don't have columns or tables because um they they it confuses the ats and it won't read it as um text it will just scramble it so so the tip here is just make sure your, your format is simple and clean. Yes, I have a little story to tell. I don't want to take too much time about one of my customers who submitted a resume to our applicant tracking system, which we use just simply to, you know, to store resumes. And mm -hmm. he wrote his name using a graphic. Well, when I told Tim, who you met, Lata, when I told mm -hmm. him to look this guy up, couldn't find him because yeah. he'd written his name with a graphic so right. you know mm -hmm. that's actually one of the tips we have so right and so and so i've just got uh, the top half and the bottom half of a, a resume format and there's three typical formats one mm -hmm. is called chronological or reverse chronological that is if you've had the same job you're staying in the same industry same type of job you want to move forward that's a chronological resume the next and and most ATS is most recruiters they prefer this because it's easier to compute then there's the uh, functional resume and that is a resume where somebody is uh, switching careers I personally think it's been given a bad rap over the years because um, um, people find it hard to connect uh, what they're looking for so it doesn't uh, I've been told it doesn't read well in ATS and uh, recruiters don't like it as much because there's an option for people to hide things um, I just view that differently. And then there's a hybrid and a hybrid is where you'll take a combination of the two resumes. This one I'm showing here, the, this is a top half, the, the top half of a first page of a resume. Um, you're gonna have your branding statement profile and you'll see the skills here. They're separated with two straight lines because this is um, a character that an ATS will read on um, where it says operational excellence, the two lines, full PL responsibility in two lines. It's not a table format, but it are they are um, characters that an ATS system will read. So that would be an ATS friendly resume. If you wanted to have, if you wanted to load up your resume with the, some of the skills that they're talking about, then you can put them up here. Now, I'm a firm believer that whatever you say in your profile or your summary and any of the skills that you have, I'm a firm believer that you have to prove it in your resume. 
So if you have, if you say you have full PL responsibility, then you have to have a line in your resume that states that. Not, not everybody does that, but that's just the way I work with my clients because if it's going to be read here from uh, an ATS perspective, you have to be able to demonstrate it. Okay. Um, so mm -hmm. that, that looks pretty nice, the way that you've separated the skills with those two vertical bars or mm -hmm. what do they call them, pipes? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's not too hard to pick out those those skills if you are reading the, re you know, if you're skimming the resume yeah. very quickly, it's not too hard to pick them out. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's uh, go forward. Sure, and the next one is just the bottom half. And I know some people have two and three pages, but this is just to, just to display um, mm -hmm. what a resume should look like. You'll either have business experience or experience. Um, you'll have the company name, how long you work there. You're, and again, I, I mentioned store manager. So if you're applying for a retail manager, you'll probably change this to retail manager from store manager or retail store manager. But just make sure you get all of that information in there. You're going to have your bullet points. We'll start with a strong past tense uh, action verb. You'll have your jobs in there. Um, and at the bottom, for example, you'll write out your designation. So Bachelor of Arts. Bob, can you go back one slide? Sure. I just want to show. So at the top, it's got your name and then underneath BA. And so I always used to, with clients, I would put their name, comma, and their designation. So name, comma, BA. Well, I've now been told recently that some eight old, really old ATSs will read BA as mm -hmm. part of your name. So it may skip that piece of it. So my recommendation for, for clients now is to have your designation underneath your name. And because you're looking for the optimization, you're having BA there. And then if then on the next slide. So not next to your name, in other words, like if you have an MBA right. or a PhD. Yeah, yeah, I always used to do your name. That's yes. Yeah. So I always used to do comma and then with it across the top. But I've now been told that some ATSs will read that as your name and skip it if that's a required designation. So, so it's almost like throwing the well, well formatted resume out the window in favor of the ATS formatted resume. Well, this is still a well formatted resume. It's just understanding that not all ATSs will read it properly. OK. All right. And so you can see we have BA here. And then down here, we've got Bachelor of Arts. So if you're not sure if they're asking for a BA or a Bachelor of Arts, you're showing it in both instances here. You're showing a BA and you're showing it written out. So if they're asking, if they're asking for designations, then show them both ways. Okay, I feel like I've missed some of the questions because okay. they've been coming in so quickly. Oh, one person asked, so, you know, with all the ATS and, you know, making sure that it passes through, what about if you get your resume to, in the hands of the hiring manager, is that going to help or does the um, knockout, he writes, does the knockout rule apply? I have that answer later on in the in the show, so stay ah, tuned. Okay. okay, all right, okay. Great question, great question. So, Whoa, who's that? So, yeah, who's that guy? So here's the other thing people have to remember. So there was a question, are you going to have only one resume? And the answer is no, because right now some new ATSs will allow you to upload your LinkedIn resume. Mm. So I oh, encourage really? everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah, yeah, I yeah. Encourage, yeah, job feature, yeah. Yeah, so I encourage everybody to go when you click on more on the home page of anybody and any and yeah. any remember any recruiter can do this too. When you hit save to PDF, it is going to download all of your information from LinkedIn. So um, you need to optimize that LinkedIn resume as well. So because if you see easy apply from LinkedIn, that's what it's going to pull from. So yeah. I highly recommend that um, that everybody optimize to the best of their ability their LinkedIn profile. And I might add that the uh, look is pretty attractive. It's you lovely. Know? It's great. It, isn't it? I, I mean, it's yeah. very, very crisp and mm -hmm. it uses a uh, sans serif font, which I'm a fan yeah. of. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. And let's see. I think I've gotten most of the questions so far. Okay. Is it true that ATS scans for last matching title only? 
people with career gap mm -hmm. and volunteering, they try to put that on top. And ATS might skip the title, which was prior to volunteering. What is your take? I, I, do you understand the um, question? Will it, will it scan more than one job title? And that, again, um, it depends on the ATS. All, not all ATSs are the same, but if, for example, I've used the, the retail manager, it yeah. will count the number of times it says retail manager. So that's part of what their backend algorithm is, is like, how many times have you had this job title? If that's important, then it, it like in the most up to date ones, it'll scan how many the job title, how many years, the job title, how many years. So you may have it once, but if you had six years and you're required to have six years, it'll pull it in as a positive. Okay, so, excellent. Yeah, there we go. There's your sans serif font. Wow, what a look <laughs> so, at that comic sans. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> it is. And then you get so here's I'll just use the you know, the next tip is they use the popular simple font. So I'm going to mm -hmm. go to the right hand side of this. So there's serif and sans serif. So serif font is a font that has a little tail on the end. And so um, New Times Roman Courier, you can tell that they have tails on the end. And the, and the problem with them is if you just put uh, in a document and you have one at 12 point font and then you do the same thing at nine point font, sometimes it starts to blur. And because it's a machine, it can't read it if it's blurry. And New Times Roman and Courier are just considered old school. Courier oh, is yeah. typewriter. Courier's typewriter font for everybody who remembers that. Um, Comic Sans. But it's that a, definitely it's a, hates you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Sans Serif. I mean, com, Comic Sans, I see as a Sans Serif. However, it is an informal font. And to the point you just mentioned, Bob, that mm -hmm. brush script, it can't. the ATS can't read that. Okay. So, but but will it read New Times New Roman or is that you know are you just suggesting so, that it sort of dates you? Know you know what? I, again, what I I think it dates you, and that's you know from a career industry perspective. But the one thing okay. I would do is just if you're yeah. doing if you're doing nine point font, it's going to start blending in, and the ATS may miss it. So it's okay. just clear, simple font. So again. My, they, they talk about Calbria uh, Helvetica as the top ones. Um, and again, everybody has a different opinion. The fonts in this actual presentation are Tahoma. Tahoma is my favorite font. Um, Ariel is another font that I use regularly, but I'm told that it's, it's often uh, overused right now. So um, yeah, so those are the fonts that you should and should not use. Okay. Yeah, I've been playing I, I, around. I've been playing around here, so you see that uh, it's gone from um, play mode to um, slideshow. Sorry about yeah. that. I, uh, no, I just someone... had a client. <laughs> What's Sorry. that? No, I was just gonna say I had a client recently who insisted on New Times Roman, and uh -huh. it was just making me crazy. But then I said, oh, okay, I then we're not, do, we're not doing anything under eleven point font. Well, you know um, the old saying, and it's it's an old saying, is that uh, Times New Roman is easier to read on paper. Whereas, yes. you know, sans serif is easier yeah. to read on the screen. But right. guess what? They're reading resumes on screen these, screens these days. Yeah, uh, for sure. I, I, so if someone, you know, wanted to know about the uh, the pipes and these, or what I call the vertical bars, and, and how to use, you know, how to get them on, you know, on the resume. And I just have to say that you have to look at your computer and it's a shift, uh, underneath the backwards dash. Uh, so I'm sorry, um, Michelle, you're just gonna, Madeline, you're just gonna have to look on your computer about that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay, next one. And the next tip is using familiar language. And so again, you've got your name first and last name, make it prominent. And that's why the name is always bigger. Um, mm -hmm. Designation, we talked about having that below your name now, contact info. If you can make your email and your LinkedIn um, um, address um, a live link, that's always excellent. Your preferred contact uh, phone number, because you know, if, you, if people have two or three phone numbers now, and I'm recommending one phone number and make sure that has a professional voicemail. So that's it. Now, the key parts are your profile, your summary experience. Don't put things like this is me. An ATFS will never recognize that. This is not the place. So this is and not like on your LinkedIn profile where you can write about right. Bob or whatever it may yeah. be. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. This is not where you want to have your personality shine through. This is where you have to follow the rules. 
and because it formats it. So you can have business experience, work experience, experience, but not what I've done because the, the ATS won't know what to do with that. So here, if, if you're handing a resume to somebody in person, that's why I'm saying you may have two resumes. It's, there's a big difference between handing a resume to somebody and having it really beautiful and yeah. having putting your personality in and following the rules that need to be followed for an ATS. Sure. And then, you know, education, training. Sometimes, like for law enforcement, they want to see your volunteering. So if you're, you know, volunteering is important, then absolutely have volunteering in a section. So okay. just make sure the headings are familiar language. Okay. And then number six, uh, second to last tip is just read the instructions. I this is what gets recruiters cranky. <laughs> so if you if they if you have to cut and paste, if you're cutting and pasting information into an ATS, it's a much older ATS. So make sure that it's simple and clear and straightforward. If you're asked to send in a Word document, send in a Word document. If you're asked to send a PDF, send a PDF. Right, right. If you're asked for a cover letter, do that. Follow the instructions precisely because this is your first test. Can you pass this first test is, is what it's about. Can you follow instructions? Can you follow instructions? Absolutely. All right. Okay. Follow up and in person. Seven. Yeah, so this this is the last tip. And the reason I have this tip here is because you can do everything right and still your resume doesn't get through for some reason. And I don't want that to be a scary thing at all. It's just it, it, because we, it depends on how it's set up. And that's why I, I want everybody to be bold here. Because you can see from the beginning that it, it isn't necessarily a black hole, but there are people at the back end and there are people at the front end and you are important. And if you are a perfect fit for the job, you have to take additional steps to make sure that you get in front of the right person. And so I'm not an outwardly bold person, but I've done this once myself and it absolutely works. So I would just say that once you've sent something through the ATS, find a secondary contact, find a secondary method to get your resume in front of the recruiter. And so there's, and again, LinkedIn is a source that we never used to have. So again, go to, sometimes job postings will have the recruiter's contact information on them. That's becoming a rarity, but I have seen it. Um, and if you have that, then send them a personal email. Mm -hmm. If you go to the company pages on LinkedIn, search out the recruiter, search out um, an employee that you may have a connection with, search out, um, you know, somebody who's in a second connection that may be one of your references, search out anybody who can help you get in front of the recruiter. And this is the time that you really need to, to work those contacts. And I would say absolutely use your connections. Absolutely. So one person asked about font size, 11 point mm -hmm. font, uh, Ariel or, I mean, sorry, sans serif or serif, what, what's your opinion on that? I mean, does it matter to the applicant tracking system? So, um, so I would say absolutely a sans serif font um, because it won't read the squiggles. Um, I have done resumes in majority, uh, as, as people get longer in their career, 10 point font. I don't recommend going anything less than 10 point font. No. Um, I have some sections in resume that aren't as important and they may like be direct reports or different things like that. That may be a, a smaller font, like a nine or something. I rarely, rarely do that, but it really depends on how long you've been in your career and how concise you need to be in your resume. But I would highly recommend sans serif and nothing less than a 10. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So myths and truth <laughs> revealed. <laughs> Yeah, so these are, you know, uh, you can leave this if you want, Bob. <laughs> are all ATSs the same? I think we've heard no. Uh, right, they not. are. Yeah. yeah, and so you just, so you have a similar approach to dealing with ATS, but just understanding that they're all different um, mm -hmm. just helps everybody understand you have to have a secondary approach. Is there a black hole? So my <laughs> take on this is that there isn't, but depending on how you're applying for work, then job rather than you might think there is. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and because there are 
3,000 you know, applicants for, for some jobs. Um, I've, I've been in an organization where we get over 200 uh, applications. So you may think it's a black hole. So that's why you have to understand how the system works and how to optimize your resume to get it through. <clears throat> So, okay, so you're going to have to help me on this one. ATS removes the human element in recruiting. Yes, and so I have had this, people tell me this uh, on a regular basis, and it absolutely doesn't. It just helps the human element because there are people inputting information into the ATS. There are people monitoring the ATS as things come through, right. and there are people pulling things out of the ATS. It just helps the people in the middle. Okay. ATS should know I'm qualified. Shouldn't it? Right? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> yeah. And yes, it, it should know you're qualified if you follow the rules. <laughs> right. Okay. This is another. I only yeah. need one resume. Hmm. Yeah. I think I think everybody knows the answer to this one now. We need at least two, and one is on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's been you know said for you know ad nauseum that yes, you need to have more than one resume. You need to tailor your resume as much as you as possible. Um, there is no way for me to figure this out. There is um, absolutely. I think number one, reviewing this presentation, you're you're getting it as a resource. It's got some good information in in in, in it as well, and just follow right. the seven right. tips. And if you need to reach out for help, then there's lots of people could, that can help. So absolutely do that, but you can absolutely figure this out. Right. Uh, if I am rejected by an ATS, I have no ch uh, chance. What do you think, Bob? I, I think that, um, I, I think you have a chance and, and mm -hmm. it depends on really, and we're talking about bold, we're talking about networking. It depends on how you disseminate your resume uh you yeah. may get rejected by the ats but if you get your hands in the hiring if you, i'm sorry if you get your resume in the hands of the hiring manager then that may change the game 100 percent, and it does work it absolutely does work my clients have done it i've done it it, it works exactly and i think that's what mm -hmm. earlier on one of my customers was talking about is you know you know, is this is this going to help? Is it going to help to get my resume in the hands of the hiring manager, or will the ATS just take away all you know um, ability for this person to to have me in for an interview? So yeah. I'll, I'll tell a very very quick story that I, um, as in career strategy, I would tell my clients to do this. Mm -hmm. And um, although I've had my business for over 12 years, <clears throat> I go in and out of corporate jobs just because I find corporate fascinating. And I always wanted to work in healthcare or, and or education. And this part-time job came up in healthcare and I wanted it. I really wanted it because it was right up my alley. Yeah. And um, so anyway, I su submitted through the ATS and I and thought, you know what, I got to take my own advice here. And I called the recruiter um, just had a conversation with him and it happened to be my birthday. So I'm saying always try and find a connection, right? It happened to be yeah. my birthday. And I just said, hi, you know, this is my name. I just submitted my resume. And you know what? It's a special day for me. And he said, oh, why? And I said, because it's my birthday. And he said, you're kidding. He said, it's my birthday. So we had the same birthday. And I said, you know what? I'm a great match for this job. Can I email you my resume? He said, sure. So with that Good. one phone call, my resume got to the top pile, top of the pile. And I was, I got employed there. So, How long ago was this? Uh, this was in 2010. Oh, okay. So LinkedIn was was around. So yeah. it may have been some other commonality you would have with the hiring manager or, or the recruiter, right? Not, not just that just, you have the you same know, birthday. No, no. On the job posting, it actually had his email address. That's why I'm saying it was uh, it, it was there. So I just okay. emailed him and I, I looked up his phone number from, mm -hmm. from the location where I knew he worked. Okay. And I happened to get him on the phone. It was a surprise. <laughs> Okay, so we do have some more questions and we have a Great. little bit of time left. Oh, wow, we're on the hour. Um, okay. Can you take one more question? I can take as many as you need. Okay, other than this has been very helpful. Thank you, Mary. Uh, someone needs to sign off. Um, oh, gosh, let's see. I, I, I know I missed one earlier on. 
Oh, okay. What would you suggest? What is the time frame uh, to apply for a position? For example, if the position was posted a week ago, is it worth applying uh, or is that, uh, you know, ship already sailed? Um, no, absolutely apply because some job postings will stay up for a month or two and some job postings will have an end date. Um, and then you may see it reappear again because that's when they've gone through the resumes and haven't found what they've needed. So right. always apply. Um, if you've missed the application deadline, again, you can follow up with a recruiter and say, look, I missed the deadline. Are you still accepting applications? They may say yes. They may say no. So absolutely right. try. It never hurts. Yeah, especially if it says there's an end date, then, you know, I know that for the city of Lowell, they won't really start reviewing resumes until that end date. So, right. um, mm -hmm. and I got a question for you, if you know this. Sure. Is it true that Homeland Security in the U.S. Um, doesn't use an applicant tracking system? I don't know anything about U.S. Homeland Security. I heard that, I, and I cannot believe that. Um, I don't know. In any case, I also heard like a company like Amazon or some corporation. I don't know, but in any case, they would have to. I can guarantee Amazon would block. I, I would think they. I think they would have to, unless they outsource their recruiting. I don't know. Right. I right. I can't imagine that. Oh, my Lata, you have been so good. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving awesome. your time. Um, You're really welcome. It's been a pleasure. I really appreciate it. And thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, mm -hmm. Please be safe, okay? We want to see you attend more webinars, more guest speaking webinars. So please be safe. Mm -hmm. Lata, you be safe. And yes, thank you. Um, all right. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, everyone, for your questions. I've really enjoyed this time together and happy to. Oh, you were uh, wonderful. Very others. good. No, hey, no we got the technology right, too. Yeah, we did. Because <laughs> we're Mark, Mark Anthony Dyson, who was a great guest speaker. I couldn't okay, get, was there. get it recorded. Or, all but, right. Anyway, nine months later, we got it right. <laughs> OK, we'll talk. We'll talk, Lada. You for sure. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.